this is one of those trips. <laughs> I figure it's about time I introduce the video because I've been kind of trudging through this icy, candly mess for like probably four hours now. Um, not quite what I expected, <laughs> but the idea of the trip is tonight. Uh, I got dropped off uh, just outside Yellowknife on Prosperous Lake. And I was going to paddle around all kind of evening, do some fishing, do a little camp, and then paddle uh, back to Yellowknife um, down the Yellowknife River. But I've been I've been stuck in ice. I was like waist deep, pushing these giant ice sheets out of the way. I'm on land now because my feet have basically lost feeling from being in the water. But it's okay because I can't feel the sharp thorns in my feet at this point. So I really need to kind of warm my feet up a little bit. But I'll kind of this is. This is one of those trips where I'm sure, you know, as soon as I get home, I'll be like, oh yeah, that was awesome. I'll be ready to go again, but I'm, I'm just having a terrible time right now, <laughs> you know, but you know, a terrible time, but it's also a good time, I guess. So yeah, I'm going to suffer a little bit more and then I'll, I'll give an update once I, once I finally get to some good open water. Looks like we're getting close to open water, but I haven't been around the corner yet, so uh, I don't know for sure. You guys can hear that sound. It sounds like the wind, but it's actually the the, uh, the waves hitting the ice there, kind of the candling ice and just and breaking it up. So that's pretty cool. Prosperous Lake. It's even bigger than it looks. It actually kind of curves and goes even further than what you can see. Um, so the original plan was that I, was, I got dropped off off the Ingram Trail on kind of a bay of Prosperous um, and I was going to paddle all the way up it tonight and then camp on an island because I saw on the map there looked like some nice islands up there. You know, do a little fishing and wake up early in the morning and then paddle all the way back down the lake and then the bay here to the Yellowknife River um, get into there and then paddle down the Yellowknife River back uh, back to town but <laughs> the, the plan has not quite gone the way I was hoping when pretty much as soon as I got into the more open part of the lake I got basically blown into this uh, big ice field of kind of this candling ice like you kind of saw and it took me at least an hour to get through that and then just I've been kind of slugging around which is you know it's been like five hours now that I've been here I got dropped off early afternoon and it's, it's eight o'clock um, and I uh, yeah I'm kind of on this point now it's actually right by Aurora Village if you know where that is and as you can see the wind is blowing um, east to west and there's still a fair bit of ice that you can see is kind of all just pushed into the to the bays and everything on the west shore and that's the way the wind's blowing so i'm not saying that it's impossible but i have decided that i am not confident enough nor would it be a, a wise idea at all to try and paddle up the lake because if you know what i mean like that's how people die if i were to flip or something i mean i would the, you can see the water's freezing there's ice on it and I would just kind of get blown into this giant ice field so I think that's you know there is no possible way I would I would do that unless you know you were in a motorboat or had a uh, an escort of a motorboat but that is just it sounds like a terrible idea to me so I've decided against that but that's okay you know I'll come back in a few weeks and check out this lake again um but yeah, but now my issue is I'm not, I haven't really gone too far down there because that's where the river is. But, you know, there's kind of this whole bay is full of ice. I'm sure the river is open. Um, well, I actually, I saw it was open when we, when we drove up here. So, you know, I kind of have a couple options now, which one would just be to camp somewhere around here and then go back to the put-in spot. But, you know, that's 
that's no fun. <laughs> and plus, I don't want to go back to that ice field I already went through. And, you know, even if I have to slug for a long time, I'm, you know, what else am I going to do? I think that might be, you know, I don't mind suffering a little bit. So I'm kind of just taking a bit of a break here. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to kind of paddle around and then same. I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing this trip. There might be a lot more walking and cold feet than paddling and fishing, but, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes and I'm, I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm going to get to the Yellowknife River <laughs> and at least the sun is, you know, it goes down after midnight and it doesn't get dark at all. So even if it takes all night, I'll have to stop and have a fire and cook up some food. I mean, maybe I'll catch some fish. It's not, that's not my, my top priority right now, but I'll, you know, I'll do a little fishing along the way. So here we go. Scouting ahead, um, just, just up here because I, I couldn't see around this corner and I realized this this kind of area is the river mouth. The river actually goes out over there but this whole area here is open which is this is delightful so you know it, it should take me like maybe an hour or less to kind of oh it's pretty thick but it shouldn't take me stupid long to trudge through here and I'm kind of in this big open bay where I can do some fishing and stuff and then um, you know it, it might get it might get hairy again because that's the west side where all the ice is blowing but hopefully I can kind of skirt along that shore and then and then make it to the river and maybe that's where I'll camp tonight is around the river and if it if it takes too long I guess I'll have to spend another night out here so then I'll definitely have to catch some fish for for Lola at least because I I only have a little bit of food <laughs> um so yeah that's the plan this is good news <laughs> and yeah I'm, I'm glad I mean there's no way I ever would have with this condition paddled all the way up there because that would be that would be pretty silly. So, awesome. Let's go get the canoe. I wonder if you were an ant walking on a sandy beach, this is how you'd feel. <laughs> Trying to push through to the open bay there. It sounds really loud, like glass smashing. That's from all the, the water hitting the ice. Lola, it's okay. Oh, these are, oh, Lola, sit. Lola, sit, please. Okay, this is a little sketchy. Lola. I do not like getting pushed up against ice sheets. Although I did that to myself. You know what, just for safety's sake, we're gonna go a little bit closer to the shore and see some of the cabins from um, Aurora Village. Yeah, we don't want to get pushed up against the ice sideways, so we're gonna go a little faster. Yeah. Yep, that's what you definitely don't want, is to be sideways against the ice. This here is the tricky part. Okay. Because Lola, sit! Lola, sit! Lola, sorry, I don't mean to be with Lola, but it's crucial that she sits. Okay, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna go a little bit closer to the shore. Um, because, yeah, we may as well, this is, you know, if we flip somewhere, it's gonna be here. So here, it looks a little thinner. And yeah, we, what we don't want, I'm just trying to, oh, Lola, oh, almost dropped the camera is to be pushed sideways against the ice by the wind. There's the Aurora Village. Here we go. Once we get in a little, okay. Stay calm. Everybody stay calm. Okay. Okay, we should be okay once we get in. You know, then we just have to be careful and slow. It's just a kind of moment where you're getting pushed up by wind in the ice. And Lola hates it, she freaks out, which I mean, is understandable. She doesn't know what's going on. So now we're gonna push through. Might have to paint this canoe. You can see I'm just pushing these big pieces of ice out of my way. Okay, we're safe now. Once we're now that we're in the ice field, it's just sketchy going up into it because if you, if you, um, you know, the wind can blow you sideways, and I don't want to flip up against the ice. Although I'm, I'm, I'm up against um, the shore here now, so I'm feeling pretty safe. If I were to flip, I mean it would suck. It would really just suck though, but I, I should be okay. Nice break. Anyway. Got a 
a little bit of a clearing up ahead. Come on. Yeah, so what I don't want to do is these big, because these things are at like hundreds of pounds each. You know, these sheets I'm moving, you can see, I'm just kind of moving that out away with my paddle. Is I, I don't want to like kind of run a ground up on one and then have all the weight shift and end up flipping. That would be bad. It would, it would really suck to flip here, even though we're, we're close to shore. Yep. I might have to, this part is, yep, I'm gonna kind of rock the boat a bit. That's why I took the big plastic canoe. I would, I mean, just paint, getting scraped, but it actually looked okay after I went through one earlier. Come on. Lola, sit. Lola, sit. Lola, sit. Lola, please sit. Lola, sit. It's, I don't mean to be mean to her. It's just, I gotta be stern. Sit, please. Hey, Lola, you gotta sit. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Okay. I feel bad yelling at her. But I'm sure she'd rather be yelled at than flip. All right. Oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought. I know originally I said it might take like an hour, <laughs> but now we're in this little... In this little channel. Oh, that feels so good. That feels so good. <laughs> oh, this part looks like it's going to be a bit of a... Okay, maybe, hmm. you, you can kind of, you have to look ahead at the channels and sometimes the shortest way isn't the easier way because you can see right there looks, you know, like it would be good, but you can see the white thick ice and you kind of want the blue gray uh, ice. So it looks like actually there's a channel if we go through here, if we can get through here. So you can see it's nicer in here because we're out of the wind, but I, I, that's one thing I just hate, being pushed up against ice by the wind. There we go. Maybe we can kind of... Through here. I just don't want to get run to the ground. Okay, Lola. She's looking a little freaked. Out. There we go. We broke through. Lola, come on. Can you sit? Lola. This isn't bad. And honestly, I don't know what would be worse if I fell in right now, the cold water, or I'd probably get just ripped apart. I already have cuts on my leg from earlier. Just ripped apart by this ice. It's super sharp. Lola, stay calm. Lola, I need you to sit for this part, please. Lola, sit. Oh, you are so good. Yes. Thank you. Here we go. She's getting more used to it. nice with these indestructible plastic canoes. They're heavier, but you know, hopefully worst it'll need is a new coat of paint after going through this sharp ice. All right. Now, here you are. Now you can see here. It's like you could, how thick is this? This is almost like a foot reached out. Yeah. It's, it's like at least a foot thick right there beside the canoe. I'm just using my hand. Go along the ice. It's like glass here. This is, this is gonna be highly satisfying. Oh yeah. All right, Lola. Yeah, it looks like we're basically home free. A little bit of a push through here. Of course, only. Of course. <laughs> this part is sucky. It's just this little area. But even these ice sheets that weigh thousands and thousands, see just this little area that's too thin for us. But unfortunately, the ice is actually quite thick, even up to that little point. Okay. Whoa, oh, yeah. A little tripod, my camera will go in the water if I... So, I'm really careful here that we don't do what I said. We'll run aground. 
Okay, come on, baby. Can I rock it a little bit? Oh, yeah. And we are through. And it looks like we're home free, although maybe not for long, in this bay here. Because the river, unfortunately, is to the west. So I'm going to go around this bay, you know. That's what I like, you know. When you're kind of cold, I'm by myself. I have a life jacket and everything, but when you're, when you're cold water um, paddling, at least personally, I always just like to stay close to shore. You know, I mean, staying close to shore is kind of cool anyway. See, there's all part of Aurora Village in this bay. So, yeah, I guess so I may as well put my, uh, my line in the water and do some fishing. Seagull. Not for you. Right now I'm uh, holding my the tripod with my left foot and my fishing rod with my right foot. Just cruising around the bay. Gone as far as we can around the bay and it's getting icy again. We're on the west shore of the lake now. So at this point, uh, we're gonna have to do some scouting. All right, so here I am scouting now. <laughs> so I went around that bay after I broke through the ice, and here I am on the west side, and sure enough, it's just absolutely full of ice. So I'm on a bit of a scouting mission now, kind of checking out this ice. Um, the river goes in over there, but then kind of runs back to there. So basically what I'm gonna have to do is make the decision of if I'm going to trudge through this ice, or if I'm gonna try and portage across the land um, into the river. I mean, obviously I'd rather, Lola, come on. I'd rather, you know, take the water route because I think there's a cool waterfall and stuff that I'd like to see going into the, uh, into the river, but you know, <laughs> I might be pulling an all nighter if I do that. So I will be back here though. So whatever happens, I'm, I'm having a great time. Well, is happy. We're kind of, yeah, this, this is one of the more uh, habitated lakes of the Northwest Territories, but I'm kind of, a lot of these cabins, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying to stay away. I'm trying to stay right near the shore, not, you know, mess with people's properties. But, yeah, a lot of these are our boat too, and obviously, as you saw, unless you have a little canoe like mine, you're not getting your, your motorboat through there. So, yeah, it's kind of, kind of cool to see. And then also what I showed you, Aurora Village is like a big, um, it's like a tourism destination where you can see Northern Lights. And I think it's a bit of a resort too. I, I don't actually know that much about it, but oh man. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of ice. So I think honestly, I might have to portage. That might be my decision. I'll scout a little bit further ahead and then I'll, uh, I'll know for sure. I really got myself in a bit of a pickle this time. I've come so far through the ice and, you know, you can see that island there. That's kind of where the river mouth is. And this entire bay is just full of ice. And like I said, I, I was considering portaging. It's about a kilometer, but it's just like, it, it's bushwhacking through like, you know, juniper and spruce bog. And, you know, I have a big, um, you know, a big plastic polymer guide canoe that is not meant to be carried that far. And I, so I'm a little bit stuck here, but it's getting late. I'm absolutely exhausted and I'm starving. So I'm gonna have to set up camp somewhere along the shore. I kind of feel bad because there's people, I mean, nobody's here, but there's people's cabins all along and I, I definitely want to make sure I like 
respect people's property and stuff, so I'm just gonna have like a little cook fire. Cause I mean, I didn't catch any fish, obviously, so I'll just have to heat up some beans over a little cook fire and then probably go to bed and figure it out tomorrow. This trip might take a, an extra day or two. So windy right now, it's just pushing this ice up against the shore. Well, as you can see, I'm pretty much completely iced in right now. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I kind of have to camp here tonight because I don't really, it's getting, it's like almost 11 now. out which is gonna really suck because that's a big heavy plastic canoe or the other option is to kind of either pull the canoe along or kind of try and break through which is also it's gonna take all day my only real hope and I, and I well first of all I'm not I actually don't know at all what I'm gonna do like you know I'll kind of scope it out tomorrow there are a bunch of like off-grid cabins around here so maybe if somebody's out there is so I can see if there are some kind of old hunting or logging roads I can follow and then other than that uh, what, I, what would be amazing is, which it might if the wind changes direction or if you know somehow all the ice drifts uh, back out to the east but you know who knows so you know either way I'll probably end up um, spending it I should have enough food. I mean, it would be great if I could catch fish also, but clearly that's not going to happen. So Lola and I are going to have to share some of uh, my canned beans and stuff. But, oh well. This is what happens. <laughs> it's still a great trip right, so far. It's exactly midnight now. We just kind of set up camp, you know, not too far from where we pulled in. Um, just getting into bed now. I think I decided that tomorrow I'm going to kind of pull down um, you know, a little bit further down the shore, and then eventually, kind of, yeah, I'll do a small portage, hopefully only 300 meters or so into the river. I think I'll miss some rapids, um, which would be cool to see, but, you know, that's okay. And then, uh, yeah, didn't have any food tonight, just because since it looks like I'll, I mean, at this point, I'm planning on spending one extra night up here. I was, I was going to do one night, but at this point, I'm planning on two. So, I, uh, I didn't eat tonight, because I thought I'd, I'd save it a little bit because I won't have enough for Loli either, so I'll have to give her some of mine. Um, so that's the plan, but we're just going to head to bed, so good night. Alright, so it's Sunday morning now. Um, I basically, I decided that I'm going to try and portage. I found this kind of, it's like an ATV trail to somebody's cabin. And it looks like it leads back to this big uh, hydro cut and then it looks like that I mean that hydro cut should be fairly clear so I'm gonna once I get to the hydro cut I'm hopefully gonna follow it north until the peninsula between Prosperous Lake and the river gets thin enough that I can just kind of walk across on some rock um, I packed everything into my backpack besides the canoe which isn't that bad, but yeah, what's, what's gonna kill me is uh, carrying the canoe through here after. Well, I was wrong again. So I got to the hydro cut, and it turns out, I mean, it is a clearing, but it's like, it's over cliffs and a giant rock, and there, there's no way I can toss a hundred pound or more giant plastic canoe through this. So again, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I think I'm just gonna keep kind of this. I have my backpack and all my gear, everything minus the canoe. So I think I'm just going to keep walking and then maybe, uh, I don't know, I'll find somewhere up, up the way here that um, I can cut in with the canoe and kind of portage across. Because I'm walking down, it is getting thinner and thinner, but at this point it's like a kilometer across and it's, you know, a, a big heavy canoe like that, it's basically impossible to portage it through.
hopefully I can, you know. And there's no way I'm gonna paddle through that lake. As you can see, there's white caps out there. The wind's even stronger today. I'm kind of blowing everything to the west shore here. So I'd be blown up. I'd be blown up upon a, uh, a huge sheet of ice. So, you know, hopefully I can get to the river today, but I don't know. Um, yeah, hopefully I can also maybe fish somewhere so I can get a little bit more food because I'm walked all the way uh, across the peninsula until I could see the river and man the river is definitely beautiful um, <laughs> I want to paddle it so bad but looking at my options I think portaging across this peninsula is impossible because it's like it's a big plastic canoe I, I'm not sure exactly how much it weighs but maybe like 75 pounds or more and you know, walking across, there's up and down cliffs where I had to use my hands, <laughs> I mean, right? I was climbing, I was kind of jumping, so that's not gonna happen. And then, as you can see here, the ice has not moved. It's, you know, unless the wind changes, it's gonna be here for days. And I think, you know, I've had enough pulling across and I think it'll take like days longer to keep kind of pulling the canoe and breaking along this stuff. And I think two days is enough for me <laughs> of breaking ice, so I think I've basically failed to paddle the Yellowknife River at this point. I mean, I will be back, but I think at this point my best bet is to kind of break um, break back through where I came, and then there's a road that um, leads to Aurora Village, and then basically pull in there and then get um, get picked up. I don't know how long it'll take me, hopefully tonight, but I guess also maybe tomorrow. And I think, you know, I have other things I could be doing than, than breaking through this ice all day long. And I, I'm almost out of food, too. I only packed for one night. So I think that's the plan. Too bad.